Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to be solving a problem which you might find quite interesting. So we have a picture of a cyclist here and as the cyclist is actually moving from the left hand side to right hand side, you know what's going to happen is he's going to experience a drag force. All right, so the cyclist when he pedals, he has to overcome this drag force, which is basically wind resistance. So what we are going to do is we are going to write a program that actually calculates the drag force and we are going to be running some parametric studies. So for those of you who are not familiar, the drag force on any given object is half times the density of the fluid that the object is resisting times the frontal area. Okay, we'll explain what the frontal area is. Um, and then uh, there's velocity square, which is the velocity with which the bike or the cycle is traveling forward and then there is actually a constant in front of it which is called as the drag coefficient all right so whenever you are given an equation at a bare minimum you know work out the units so the drag force needs to have a unit of newton because force we know that the unit for force is newton and newton is nothing but mass times acceleration so the left hand side unit is going to be kg meter per second square. So kg is the unit for mass and meter per second square is the unit for acceleration. So let us work out the unit on the right hand side. So for density the unit is kg per meter cube and for area the unit is meter square and for velocity the unit is meter per second and since there is an exponent of 2 you will get meter square per second square. You know um, if you basically do the math this is going to be kg meter per 4 by meter cube by second square. This is going to cancel this guy and at the end you will have kg meter per second. Note that in this process we did not take into account CD. All right? But even without including the CD, the left hand side and right hand side unit matches and that is why your drag coefficient is unitless. Okay, And this is also called as a non-dimensional quantity. Right? Because non-dimensional means it does not have any dimensions, which says that there are no units for that particular variable. Okay, So here, what we are interested in learning is, so let us say that there is a cyclist traveling at a particular velocity, what's going to happen to the drag force? That's what we are interested in and we are going to be writing programs for it. As I said uh, in the start of this video, we are interested in this area and this area is basically your frontal area. So this is the area that the flow is actually facing. So in this particular case, it's going to be uh, the area of this complex shape. So let me use a different color. So if I'm able to calculate this area, you know, we're basically projecting the man's uh, shadow. And then if I'm able to calculate this area, you know, anything that bla is black, I need to take into account. All right. So this is called as your frontal area A. Now estimating this is very hard, but you need to understand that as you are changing positions when you are pedaling, you know, you are changing your uh, area. And because of this area change, the drag force that you are encountering is going to change. And that is why if you watch some, you know, bicycle competitions or cycle competitions, you will see that people are changing their positions to make sure that they experience uh, the least amount of drag as possible. All right, so that being said, now let's get to the programming part. So to follow along, you need Sublime, Python, and the, the matplotlib library. So Python is a very popular language, and uh, you know it's used in a lot of industries. I've already told this before. So today we are going to be writing the program for calculating the drag force. So whenever you start writing the program, the first thing that you need to do is you need to you know start with a comment saying what the program is about. So a comment is a line in the program that never gets executed. So, you know, I can write something like program to calculate uh, the drag force. All right. So, you know, you can write anything and you can also include your name. You know, for example, you can say this program is written by Sarang. So this right here is called as hash or pound. Um, you need to type that first in order for Python to recognize it as a comment. So the other option to comment the code is to use doc string, which is basically three double quotes. 
and anything between two sets of double quotes is recognized as a comment okay so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with defining some inputs so let us uh, type in inputs and the first input that i'm going to be taking in is the drag coefficient so drag coefficient is usually represented as cd or the other way you can represent it as a c underscore d and we are going to say that the drag coefficient is equal to 0 0.8 all right now this is how you define a variable in python so here c underscore d is called as the variable and it is holding the value called 0 0.8 now if you are completely new to programming this is called as the left hand side and this is the right hand side and typically how programming languages work is the left hand side is most likely going to be your unknown and your right hand side is going to be known quantities it can be numbers or it can be other variables whose values have been defined okay and i'll explain to you that shortly so the next thing that i want to do is i want to include the value for the frontal area which in this case is going to be 0 0.1 now it's a good practice to basically say that what each and every variable means so this can be said you can say that this variable is your drag coefficient coefficient and this variable right here is your frontal area all right and for density i'm going to use the variable called row and i'm going to say row is equal to 1.2 you can include the unit as well in the comment just for reference but python is not going to check if units are consistent or not for example if you input your area in millimeter square or kilometer square and if you expect your answers to be right it's not going to be right okay so you need to make sure that you pass in the right numerical value that is your responsibility so for density the unit is going to be kg per meter cube right all right so root and the final thing that we need is the velocity uh, we can say bicycle velocity we can refer to that as velocity and i'm going to say that the velocity is going to be two meter per second all right so finally to calculate drag force i can say that drag force is half which is nothing but 0 0.5 times cd times uh, rho times a times velocity times velocity because it's velocity square and now we are going to execute it so what you can actually do is go to tools and then use control b to build okay so now if you're using a mac then it can be command b all right so the other thing is you can just use the shortcut directly and it's going to execute it note that the values are not getting printed out so what i can do is i can use my print statement to print out the drag force all right so my drag force is 0 0.192 newtons so let us say at this point i want to calculate the effect of velocity on drag force so what i can do is i can open up an excel sheet and you know i can just have two columns one is velocity and the second is drag force and you know for each value of velocity that i put in I can just note down the value for the drag force that I'm that is getting printed out. So once I've done that, I can create a simple plot in Excel. So you can see that on the x-axis I have my velocity and in the y-axis I have my drag force and this is the trend. So what I can do is I can actually add a trend line here and for the trend line what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a linear trend line. So here what we are showing is the dotted line represents uh, the drag force variation if the variation was linear. Okay, but clearly the variation is not linear. So what I mean by that is um, you can see that since drag force is proportional to velocity square the resulting curve is going to be parabolic all right so plots like this actually help us visualize how a particular quantity affects another quantity in this case how velocity affects the drag force 
So in this process, you know, we basically visualized this trend using Microsoft Excel, but you know that you don't have to do that always. So what I can do is I can actually make the plot here itself. And that is what matplotlib is for. So I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. If you're completely not familiar with programming, you can think of this as a shortcut. Okay. It's a command that plots and I'm importing that plotting tool as plt. 